<laughs> to be honest, I, I've said the majority of what I wanted to say. It's just you know, saying that the Prophet Muhammad was a pedophile, I think it's going to trigger a lot of Muslims. Yeah, For me, course. I think, look, it's freedom of expression. You can say sure. what you like. I'm not going to like it. Sure. It doesn't mean I should disrespect you as a human being. Of course, okay. I, respect, I respect you too. You believe I, in God, I, I believe in God. I, and, and unless you need to head, I'd rather continue this conversation, so I'm happy to, for us to do it off camera. That's fine. Yeah. If, if, if you want to. So I was just interested in what all the oh, okay. noise was about. Okay, and then sure. I thought, hold on, I'm a bit late for the prayer. He's had some prayer mats out. And I, uh... <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, do you, are you happy to continue with the camera or would you rather not? Nobody's going to try and trick you out. I'm not going to do that. I just want to have a respectful conversation. It's, it's literally just the, the face. Blurring. Okay, if, if, if he blurs, are you happy to... Okay, yeah, cool. So... Yeah, um, where were we? We were talking about uh, Sunni Shia differences and um, yeah. So, so look, Alex. There's a lot of aggression yeah. when it comes to Islam within Muslim countries. Right. I was just in Egypt. Okay. I had exactly the same kind of treatment that I had when I was in Morocco, for instance. Mm. Uh, I went to the mosques. I tried to make it a habit of going to as many mosques as I can when I'm in a Muslim country. Yeah. It's just to pray there, have a gander. When I'm in there, mm. it's a really hot country. I'm wearing shorts, right? Right. Sunni Muslims and a lot of other Sunni Mus uh, Muslims believe that you shouldn't pray with shorts. Mm. As a Shia, you can pray with shorts. That's and is, fine. is that specifically a Shia Sunni difference, or is it kind of a liberal conservative difference? If it, you're might, uh, it might be a bit of a liberal element as well, but right. I think as a Shia, it's it's fine. You right. Can, you can pray. As long as you, you cover up the majority of what you're, what you, you, yeah, you're yeah, private, of course. It, it's fine. Sure. Um, but I had a lot of hate, and it's annoying because you want to be... Like, look, I was born here. I was born in London. Big, yeah, yeah, tough uh, accent. Can, yeah. Um, and so, I, I would never speak to you or to a Muslim of a similar disposition and attitude to yourself, the way I spoke to that guy. I only reserve that for the jihadists, and we have to. I know, I understand why you don't like it, really, I do, but the fact is, bullies only, bullies, extremists, murderers, because that's what they are in their heart, they only understand one language, and that's the language of aggression. If I try and speak to them the way I'm talking to you, uh, I'm going to get walked all over. Part, it would, it's partly that, but also the fact is, if you project weakness, you invite aggression, and they don't respect it. You have to speak the language they understand. And I get why you don't like it. I mean, a lot of we get we in, in you know in our ministry, our group of friends against this opponent, we get quite a lot of flack from from other Christians. You say you're too rude, you're too aggressive, you're too you know. Uh, and and I think it's mainly, honestly, Alex, you're not a rude guy. From what I can say, you're a very yeah. humble, uh, decent guy. Well, I try to be humble. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's just the statements. I, I get it. It's shock factor. Yeah. You want to get a reaction. You want to get mm. down to the core. We, I think a better way of angling it is, well, how do you feel about mm. the majority of people? calling your prophet this, that, and the other. Yeah, and well, again... The, I call your prophet this. Yeah. What so do you think about it? That, that, is, that is the angle I would take, or a similar angle to that would be... Some, or, you know, even just a more questioning angle, you know, let's have, let's learn from each other, let's have back and forth, let's, okay, this is what I've heard, now what's your opinion? That's the angle I would take with someone like you. With these guys, I just, I just can't do that. You can't afford to do that. Alex, I'm just going to go back to, to what you're saying. I was born here, right? Yeah, so I don't yeah. have the same kind of understanding culturally that I would if I was back home in Iraq, yeah. right? So I'm a little, a little bit more liberal. Yeah, I think it's so. When I do pray, it's not going to be exactly the same way that other people pray. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go extremely slow. I'm going to do it the way I was taught to do it by mm. my more liberal family. Yeah. Not to say they completely neglect uh, their religion. Sure, I, I sure. I don't drink. Course. I don't do drugs. I don't do. You know, I don't eat pork. Fine. But you're, you're but not as ultra conservative as some of the Muslims here. Ultra conservative yeah. to the point where I will say you're doing the wrong thing. Right. You're going to hell. That's bad. Mm. Because you're not inviting me for discourse. Sure, of course. I agree. What you did immediately. You, you we're willing to hear out my, my argument. And I do want to talk more about that because I've not... Usually the Muslims who mention, well, I don't believe, usually Shias who mention, I've, I've, I have sources that say Aisha was a different age. Because of the extremists, I don't usually get the chance to talk to them. So when, you, when you're done, I, will, I would like to talk about that if you're happy to, yeah. So again, uh, coming back to liberalism, it just, it really pains me, right? When, when a Muslim, another brother of mine, yeah. Islam, were to say, you're doing the wrong thing, how do you do this? Because it, it takes away the religious aspect. It's already hard enough that I went through four years of university without so much as drinking 
a droplet of alcohol, right? It's the same. It's the same for most Christians who go to university with sex. I mean, there's so many people sleeping around. It's hard. Yeah, I get you. I get you in that. So when there's an elderly Muslim man telling you you shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that, it makes you want to just separate yourself from the mosque. I get it completely. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah. I always jump to look. You have your religion. I have mine. Mm. Please do not tell me how I should do my own sure. thing. I, you can see I'm a grown man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've done the research. I yeah. have my family. I don't need you to, to lecture me and tell me I'm doing the wrong thing because I will never want to talk to you again. Yeah, of course. I get you. Yeah, yeah. cool. Um, so, do you... Um, no, did you pray type five times a day then? I do, yeah. Okay, interesting. I just did my three prayers there. Right, <laughs> and the prayers are presumably quite different from Sh uh, Sunni prayers, uh, so or are they kind no, of the no, same? They're exactly the same. Uh, okay. Subuh, morning, Vohor, Asar, which is uh, midday mm. and uh, afternoon. Yeah. And then there's Maghrib and Asha, which is the sundown and the evening. Mm. We all do the same prayers. Yeah. But the difference is they hold uh, their hands really up here, right. we hold our hands down here. And they would say that that's a, uh, oh, a, a, a vision to divide up. Yeah. Oh, wow, okay. And it's like, dude, can yeah. we pray? Do you want me to go and not yeah. pray? And they'll say, no, 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 please come back. Pray, pray. Wow, okay. Yeah. So you, it, 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 it's interesting, you may not know this, but we actually have uh, and had long before Islam, not, not a criticism, just a historical fact, but um, long before Islam, we also had daily prayers. We actually have seven in Christianity now. Unfortunately, in the West, it's not because so much of Western Christianity and the bad side of Protestantism, it's all fallen away. It's become liberal, it's become anti tradition it's become corrupt. It's funny you say that. Mm. Um, I have, my dad's friend is actually a Syrian. Um, really? Oh, so wow, okay. He's of the, uh, <laughs> the original Assyrian <laughs> Christian religion. Yeah. Um, the people who, who believe in, uh, uh, how do they pray? They actually pray exactly the same as yeah, us. Exactly. They go down and, and kneel and put their heads yeah. to the floor yeah. and they come back up. And in Greek and Russian, Eastern Orthodox Christianity, to a lesser extent in Western, so Catholic and Protestant Christianity, but in, in Greek, Russian, Slavic, Arab Christianity, uh, Eastern Orthodoxy, they do the same thing, although it's yes. done in a slightly different context Another to the Muslims. Of, of his, he does exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's a slight, the technique is slightly different, and the way and the time they do it is slightly different. But yeah. the, um, uh, but, but yeah, it, I, I would say, again, not, not in a disrespectful way, I would say that was something that Islam took from, I mean, stolen, but inspired, shall we say, from Christianity. It's probably true. Um, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm learning. This is a learning experience for me. So, uh, the thing is, there are a lot of things. I'm seen as kind of the black sheep where I'm yeah, I can I'm imagine questioning <laughs> things. I, yeah. have to. My dad always told me, you have to question it. Don't just believe at face value, mm. right? As a Muslim, you do have to believe the entirety of the Quran um, yeah. as is. Yeah. So you, you're not allowed to say, this is wrong. Yeah. You are allowed to question it and say, look, why is it this way? Yeah, exactly. About the whole thing of... of we would say the same thing about the Bible. Sure. Yeah. Now, drinking alcohol, for instance, um, in, in part of the Quran it says it's fine, as long as you give 40 days before uh, you, you can pray. Yeah. Right? Uh, so they get 40 days before you can pray. Right. Yes, and it counts. Wow, okay. So you, you still have to pray during yeah. those 40 days, but it won't count until after the 40 days. Right, I see, okay. It would, now that was put in because a lot of people would go to the mosques drunk and then, you know, wobble about and right. do their prayers wrong. Yeah. After that, a couple of years after that, then the Prophet included another verse where it says, no, uh, alcohol, drugs, that sort of thing, no, don't do it, it's bad. Mm. Okay, so there are contradictions, but for good measure, it yeah. makes sense based off the history. I see. Yeah. So, so do you think then, open question, not asking polemically, but do you think then that there is room for development in the narrative of the Quran? Really? Interesting. So, so you would ascribe to sort of the general orthodox view that the Quran was kind of given unchangeably from heaven, is that? It's the direct words uh, described from Allah uh -huh. Muhammad. Exactly. Muhammad. Right. That's what we believe. Right. Now, there might have been some false interpretations because, again, it wasn't written until very long after he was dead. Mm, the actual writing down of the yes. text itself. But the beautiful yeah. thing about Islam is it's a, a reiteration, it's, it's a spoken... Uh, mm. it's, it's an oral tradition. Yes, yeah. yes, exactly. You, you pass it on. And a lot of people can actually memorize the whole Quran. Mm. I can't do it myself, I wish I could, but they memorize the whole Quran yeah. in its entirety and then write it down. Yeah. That was the beautiful thing about it. Mm. Not 
interchangeably in the same way I think as the Bible, in, in the case where it kept having different iterations from and the Old Testament. Well, that, that's actually kind of quite a common myth. So it's um, not not just amongst Muslims. Lots of secular people believe it because I've seen the Da Vinci Code. Yeah, like the Da Vinci Code is a classic example. It's not history. It's it's, it's mythology. It's fiction. It's it's anti-Christian propaganda. So basically. Well, I actually try, when I'm reading the New Testament, I try to read it in the original Greek. Now, I don't know Hebrew, so I, at least not well enough to read it, so I, I have to use a translation for the Old Testament. So that they, sets you apart, because the majority of yeah. Christians I've spoken to actually just follow the, the, new, uh, um, the new Testament. The New Testament, yes. Mm. So, so the, well, they're pro that's probably true of some of them, but I think that most... There are lots of Christians who, because of the way they talk about the Bible, because of certain unavoidable things about our faith and about the value we place and the purpose of the Old versus the New Testament, you can be forgiven for getting the impression that we believe in the New Testament and not in the Old Testament. But actually, historically, in terms of our you know, Orthodox Christian faith, we've always believed in both the Old and the New Testament, but what we believe is that the New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old Testament. So the New Testament was pointing to Jesus Christ. How long after Jesus died did the Bible get written? The Old, uh, the, well, the Old Testament all was the Jewish scriptures that came before Jesus, but the, the New Testament was written, so we're both stumbling over our words, it's fine. Um, but the New Testament was probably written, uh, it, scholars vary in their view, I think the, the, the more anti-Christian scholars would say that Revelation, the last book of the New Testament, was written at uh, about 120 AD. Which is actually very, very early. I mean, you know, I'll give you, to, to, by way of comparison, the earliest sources we have for the life of Alexander the Great come to, I think, 200 years. I can't remember the exact number, but a matter of centuries after, he, after his death. You know, you're going to get used to it in this place, unfortunately. Anyway, yeah, um, you're asking. Um, the Gospels were written within uh, a, a small number. You know what I mean by the Gospels, right? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Yeah. So they, they're the biographies of Jesus and his ministry and his life, death, and resurrection. Yeah, there's a level of comparison between the Gospels and the Hadith in terms of, uh, uh, in, term, in, a narrative, in a narrative sense. They, they are the narratives of, of Jesus' life in the same way that the Hadiths, that the Hadiths provide the closest thing of a narrative where the Quran doesn't do that. Yeah, that, that's true. Although, more broadly, what we believe about the Bible, as I, you alluded to this earlier, so you're probably, you're probably aware of this, what we believe about the Bible is not really comparable, other than the general sense that they're both holy books. What we believe about the Bible is, isn't really comparable to what Muslims believe about the Quran. What Muslims believe about the Quran actually is closest to what we believe about Jesus. So, you, yeah, so you, you describe the, the Quran, you might not use this language, but you, it, would, it would be accurate in your view to describe the Quran as the uncreated word of God. That's how we would describe Jesus. Okay. Except that we believe that the uncreated word of God is personal. It's a person with a personality, as it were, not, not an object. Um, the Bible, as you mentioned earlier, is, according to Christian belief, a created book that God inspired using men. And that means that it contains not error, but it does contain the mark of their personalities, yes, their, yes, did yes, you see what I'm getting yes, at? Yes. Their personalities, exactly. their personal experiences, who they are. And so, you know, Paul has a very, very different writing style to paint. Yes. <laughs> make it louder. <laughs> anyway, um, so Paul has a very, very different writing style, in both in Greek and in English, to, for example, John. Um, and that's part actually of how we know who wrote which books of the Bible. But some, there are some books that we don't know, and that's not a problem from a Christian perspective because we still believe it was divine inspiration. But anyway, going back specifically to your question of when it was written, uh, I would say that you can at the very least make a very good scholarly case, and I know scholars who do, that the entirety of, uh, if not the Gospels, then actually the whole New Testament was written before 70 AD. You know, 70 AD was the date where the, the Romans destroyed Jerusalem and sacked the temple. The Romans sacked uh, Jerusalem because of the... So basically in 70 AD there was a, uh, a Jewish rebellion. So Judea was one of the more rebellious provinces of the Roman Empire. And they launched a full-scale rebellion against the Roman Empire. Uh, and they, uh, they had some success at first, but then they failed. And so in 70 AD, the future Roman Emperor Vespasian and his son Titus invaded, sacked Jerusalem and completely destroyed the Jewish temple. Now Jesus in the Gospels can't remember the references, but uh, just towards the end of the Gospels, he actually gives a prophecy of this happening. He describes no d utter destruction, no stone being left unturned. You know, the fact he, that he foresaw it. He foresaw it. Yeah, he had a prophecy. He gave a prophecy of that happening. So, 
one of the interesting things is if you were an ancient author trying to spread your sort of apocalyptic religion, which Christianity in that context was, uh, and your founder, whoever you believe he was, made a prophecy that had come true, you would have pointed to the fact that the prophecy came true as evidence for who he was. But interestingly, the Gospels don't do that. All they give is an account of Jesus giving the prophecy. There's, yeah, I mean, the, uh, the Gospels are full of li little bits and pieces like this, little hints that suggest it was written before a certain date. Another example I'll give you is um, eyewitness testimony. So, um, the there are architect architectural and archaeological sites in Jerusalem, in Judea, that exactly match the descriptions that they were give that have been given to them uh, in the New Testament because a scene like Jesus heals someone there or, or something happened, and it gives a description of the place where it happened. And uh, we, later on, archaeologists have dug it up and discovered, oh, it's exactly as the Gospels described it. There's quite a lot of stuff like that. And even from a secular perspective, or at least a non-Christian perspective, you can make a very good case for an early date for They'll the Gospels. They'll always doubt it. They'll always yeah. make some kind of conspiracy against it. Exactly. Oh, no, this is made up. Exactly. exactly the same thing about the dinosaurs. Where yeah, the yeah. majority of the bones aren't actually real dinosaur bones. <laughs> yeah, in the I know, I know. It makes sense. Yeah. We're dealing with 65 million year old bones. Yeah. Of course they wouldn't hang on. If you believe in evolution, which I imagine. You do. <laughs> you probably don't want to say that too loudly around here, do you? <laughs> no, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of agnostic on the whole evolution creation thing. What I believe is that the book of Genesis, the account that it gives of creation, is 100% true. The extent to which it's literal or metaphorical, I don't know, and I'm happy not knowing because it doesn't affect my salvation. What affects my salvation is my relationship to God through Jesus Christ. That's right. Yeah. It has to be your relationship. It's your independent relationship. Once other people have a say on how you should believe mm. and what you're wrong about, that's when mm. you start to diverge and just, just move away mm. from it. Well, I sort of see where you're coming from in that regard, but we, we wouldn't use that language because Christianity, in a, in a similar way to Islam, is a religion, unlike the... the Culturally. Culturally. That's what happens. Sure, okay, right. Well, well okay, fair enough, yeah, good. Uh, because, you know, we, we would describe, we talk about um, structure, structures of authority in the church. So if my priest discovers that I believe a heresy, um, he, and, you know, if I become a priest one day, if God willing, you know, I, and I discover that a, um, that a parishioner of mine, someone who goes to my church, believes in heresy, who believes in something that fundamentally contradicts the faith, that priest, me, my priest, whoever they are, has a duty to not give me communion. You know what I mean by communion? Like we have the bread, the bread and the wine, which becomes the body and blood of Christ. And, you know, so, so there is an element of that, and we have the creeds, we have the writings of the early church fathers who were like the early Christian leaders after, after the Bible was finished. Um, and, and those give us guidance as to what we're supposed to believe. But I, as a Christian, would, I, I'd say there's quite a lot of leeway in terms of what you can believe and what you can get right and wrong before you cease being a Christian. So that, that's why I say lots of Christians will not agree with me that Catholics, Protestants and Orthodox are all legitimate Christian traditions. Um, but I, I very consciously believe in being an eclectic Christian, being a, a syncretic Christian, not Good. syncretic, no, no, not not sense. not syncretic with other religions. Obviously, we respect members of other religions as best we can. Good. I mean, I, as you know, I, has, I struggle. As you saw earlier, I can't really respect jihadists, but that's a different yeah. kettle of fish. But um, you know, not syncretic with other religions, but syncretic within the different forms of Christianity. Because you know, um, I, I would say I am a Protestant, and uh, for theological reasons, I can go into. Um, but I absolutely consider. Um, Eastern Orthodox as a tradition to be legitimate Christians and I would actually say there are, cer uh, there are certain regards where they are closer to apostolic original Christianity than we are. There are others where we're closer to, Christi to apostolic Christianity and the, the specifics of how that works out basically means that I'm a Protestant but the, the church I attend and the group, the circle as it were within the Church of England that I belong to is very Catholic so you know if you go into a service as I mentioned earlier candles, robes, icons, incense, liturgy, a really beautiful and full service of worship because we believe that, uh, yeah, but yeah. in many churches, uh, at moment where you study, uh, went to the church, it's a oh, nice, nice experience to, to, to diverge and, and go and, and search different religions and see the way that they interpret their own faith. Yeah, uh, you have to do that, but to, to neglect that and, and kind of cage yourself.
yourself in. That's the worst thing you can do. Yeah, so I think I think there's truth to that. And yeah. it, it'll make you lash out in the same way that the other guy did. Yeah. Um, let's go back to, to the, the translation of uh, Prophet Muhammad with nine-year-old uh, child. Yeah, sorry, I've been taking us on all yeah. sorts of tangents, no. but I've enjoyed it. So let, let's talk about that. I do. I do I, I, I don't necessarily even want to push back because I'll you know, give you counter arguments, although I will, I'll give you some back and forth. But like I say, I've not had the proper chance to interact with a Muslim who, who would rely on other sources to say actually she was older than nine. Look, as a whole, regardless of what you believe, look, on the Sunni side, a majority yeah. of the ones I've spoken to, they say, look, the Prophet Muhammad said this uh, about 70 different sectors of Islam and only one of them is factual. Mm, I've heard of this. You will not go to heaven otherwise if you're any of it. It doesn't make any sense. Mm. Why would he say that? I mean, if you're going to devote your life to praying and, 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 and God and, and everything else and charity, why would you just be sent to hell? Why? Mm. It makes no sense. So I, I would say something very similar to Christians yeah. who say you have to belong to my denomination in order to go to heaven. I would say if yeah. you love Jesus Christ and believe that he has died for you, then... But even if you don't, does that mean you have to be subjected to hell? Well, so, so are you asking me, do I believe that non-Christians go to hell? Yeah. So with, I say this with all love and respect towards non-Christians, because I love you all and I want you to be safe, but yes. There may be a small number of exceptions. So I don't know what happens if um, if somebody has never heard of Jesus, for example. There's a general consensus in the church that we don't know what happens to people who never, ever, ever hear the gospel, but we need to give them the gospel anyway. Now, when I say that, it's not me saying, I've got Christianity right and you're wrong and I'm gonna condemn you to hell for that. Like I disavow that attitude and I try and exercise it for myself. See, Alex, my faith doesn't say that. Fair my enough. My faith tells me Christians, Jews, Muslims, we're all going to have it. Interesting. If is you that, have faith in Allah, yeah. God, which you do. Is that a particularly Shia doctrine or is that more your sort of... When I say liberalism, I'm not being derisive, I'm just... Yeah. yeah. Interesting, okay, I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah. Now, I think you've encountered a lot of people with extremist values. Oh yeah, 100%. I completely recognise that they are not necessarily representative of yeah, all Muslims. That's maybe motivated the reason why you maybe think that... Uh, anyone apart from Christians will go to hell. Oh no, I believe that longer. I, I used to actually, when I was oh, an okay. early Christian, and it, in the early days of my faith, when I first came to this belief that non-Christians are going to hell, I I actually had a uh, quite, or, or maybe not quite at this time, but I didn't have nearly as negative an opinion of Islam as I do now. Um, I just kind of would have put it amongst the other religions of the world. Um, it's it's partly because, yes, the interactions I've had that leads me to have a bad opinion of Islam. It's also because I've looked into the teachings of Islam, and I don't claim to be an expert, but what I, what I have studied, I'm not an expert, yeah. of course, but no one is. what I have studied has not given me a favorable impression on it, and I say that respectfully. But regarding the hell thing, that's actually pretty standard Orthodox Christian teaching. And again, it's not about hate or arrogance or thinking we're right and everyone else is wrong and they're going to hell. What, I get it. I get why it comes across that way, but this is partly why I'm glad we're having this conversation because it gives me the opportunity to, sh to show you that, you know, we don't believe that out of hatred or arrogance. We believe what we believe is that humanity is corrupted and sinful, and that's why the world is this horrible mess. But God Himself came amongst us in order to deliver us from that mess. Being Jesus. Being Jesus, exactly. Yeah, He came into into the world as Jesus Christ. The Word became flesh. Remember, I mentioned earlier about Him being the Word. The Word became a man. And in doing so, he united all of humanity to himself. Like, so you know about Jesus being one of our prophets, right? Yes. You know that we have a lot of love and respect for him. And, uh, I, I know that you mean to, but what I, would we do. We do. Well, what I would suggest is that from a Christian perspective, the Islamic version of Jesus is not the same Jesus as the one that we believe in. We believe that, the, that like I said, that Jesus was God incarnate. And to reject that, it, to, to not believe that, is to, to believe in a different Jesus. Now, I know that many Muslims in the sincerity of heart believe that they are respecting Jesus, and I respect that. But I think that to truly respect Jesus means we need to take seriously what he said about himself. Do you think it might be due to seeing miracles? It's in the same way as if you were to see a celebrity today, yeah. and fans of those celebrities, you think that they were worshipping those idols, that you think that they mm. were the last calling of God uh, being on that stage singing. Can you see <laughs> yeah, I mean, this day and age, that is how people treat celebrities. Why wouldn't that be the case back a thousand years ago, two thousand mm. years ago, right? Regarding Jesus and the people Jesus, around him. Seeing Jesus uh, with all the miracles that he conducted mm. and thinking, oh my God, this is yeah. the best thing ever to come. Let me worship. That's actually a very good question and it, it ties quite strongly into how we Not can... Jesus no, 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 it's a, no, it's a good question. It's a, it's a fair question. 
and you know, I, I know that you're not being insulting because you're asking these questions in good faith, unlike some of the other people here. But um, the this ties into part of the reason why I think we can know historically that Christianity is is true and that what Jesus said about himself is true. Okay. So many of the people who interacted with Jesus, a bit like Muhammad in this regard, you probably agree, really were not fans of him. Oh yeah. They, you know, you're probably familiar with that. You know, the Pharisees who were roughly the equivalent of the Orthodox Jews, the ultra-Orthodox Jews of today, they hated him. They thought he was he was demon-possessed. Um, the, um, the, the Sadducees, who were a similar, different but related sect of, of Judaism at the time, um, they, they were debating with him constantly. And ultimately, they conspired to put him to death, and that's why Historically, he died on the cross. That's what happened in 622 uh, with Muhammad and, and him being pushed towards the R3 with his followers. Right. Lots of people back in Mecca, they did not accept the, the sayings of Muhammad. They had to get out of here. Right. So, so in the same vein, I mean, I, I have plenty of arguments that I would use against Islam, depending on who I'm di uh, discussing it with. One of the arguments I would use against Muhammad wouldn't have been the one that, I know you're not being, you're saying it polemically, it's, it's an honest question, but that isn't one that I would use against uh, uh, Muhammad, that it was just, you know, celebrity fervor, if you know what I mean. No, no, of because there are too many records of, in the case of Jesus and, and of Muhammad, this is one of the, the few things they have in common, but um, the, in, in, the case of, uh, in the case of Jesus, there are too many records of people who hated him, and not only people who hated him, but people amongst his enemies who became his followers. And the, cla yes, yes. the classic example is Saint Paul. Yeah, the, the classic example is Saint Paul. Um, there are others. There's, there are mentions in the, the New Testament of um, priests from the Jewish temple who became followers of Christ early on. And interestingly, they continued to serve in the Jewish temple. But um, do, you, do you see what I mean? Yeah. I think if, if the Gospels were and the historical accounts of Jesus were trying to present a picture of him as um, this wonderful man and nobody could resist him and so we got everyone just caught, caught up and you know if, if that were the picture it gave I think you know then that would be a legitimate point in terms of dis, uh, discounting the credibility of the, of, of the, the accounts um, but what we see is something very different and not only that we actually this is where the reliability of Christianity as a historic religion comes in if you want to start a religion in the ancient world especially in the Roman world what you do is you create a, a divine hero figure who, who wins, basically. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that they don't have flaws, they don't make mistakes, bad things don't happen to them, but ultimately they are essentially a figure of strength and victory in some form or another. The classic example is Hercules. Do you know what I mean? So the, I don't know how familiar you are with the original mythology, but you know, Hercules has some, um, or Her Heracles, to use his original Greek, you know, Heracles has some uh, bad to him in his life. But because he's this super strong, godly hero figure, and he's the son of Zeus, he, 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 he overcomes. You would want, if you wanted to found a religion in the ancient world and make it successful, you would want to have a narrative at its center that was like that. Do you know what I mean? That's not what happens with Jesus. In the case of Jesus, we have... Are you happy to blur this, this brother's face, Chris? Are you going to film? Oh, uh, yeah, well, I was going to get your speech thing, but... Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll, do, we'll, we'll do that in a bit, yeah? Uh, are you happy to uh, be on camera? Sorry, I thought, I, thought he was coming to, I thought he was coming to film us. Oh, you're already on camera. Yeah. Oh, you're already on, I thought you were coming to film us. <laughs> anyway, no, yeah. Thanks, man. I'm going to give a talk on the Holy Spirit and, and how Muslims understand the Holy Spirit in relation to Muhammad. To stay another few minutes I, I yeah, that's fine. Ha happy to wrap up. I just want to share this thought with you because it's, it's an interesting one. Um, but maybe if you come back in the future, we can talk in more detail it's about... It's about the first time actually coming around here. Oh, great. Well, welcome. We need... We, we want more people like you who are willing to have respectful discussions here. But a lot of fear comes from you know seeing YouTube videos of how people lash out and it almost got really violent. Mm. Right? And, and well, it is it is partly a cycle of revenge, you know, as you say, you know, a, a vicious cycle. But unfortunately, I would say. Uh, with respect that the, it's the Islamists, mostly Sunnis, it's those types, they are the aggressors in that cycle. Anyway, we can talk about more about that another time, so I want to finish up this point about Jesus. Christianity doesn't create a, a Herculean narrative uh, regarding its central figure. Jesus dies the most shameful and humiliating and horrible death that was imaginable at the time. Now, we're so you in the West, so used to seeing uh, crucifixes. Even as a Muslim, you probably would latch on to this. to see a crucifix. Well, that, that's an interesting point. I'll get, I'll get to that a in a cross. second. But um, uh, not cross, uh, cross. yeah, cross. I'm actually I'm wearing one right now. It's just, just not visible. Anyway, but but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. The um, 
Christianity create, ha, has a narrative where the central figure dies the most horrible, humiliating, yeah. shameful death possible. Crucifixion was so was considered so shameful, it was like unmentionable. Like Roman historians such as Tacitus, who's one of our main sources for the early Roman emperors, he doesn't he never uses the word crucifixion. He only he uses euphemisms. Uh, you know, the, the most horrible death or the shameful death in reference to Jesus, interestingly enough. Um, if you put a religion with a, such a defeatist narrative at its center and then try and proclaim that to the ancient world, then at least under natural rules, it's not going to have any success. And yet Christianity was a, an amazing success. Now, we were a persecuted minority for 300 years at first until St. Constantine you know, passed the Edict of Milan and made Christianity legal. Alex, just, just a, mm. a note on the crucifixion. Do yeah. you know what the Muslims believe about the whole crucifixion? Yeah, that he wasn't crucified. Is that something you believe? Mm. That someone else took his place. Mm. And he was... I'm curious, why do you think that happened? Why do you think, I'm assuming, I could be wrong, but I assume that what you believe happened is that Allah caused that switcheroo to take place. What, why do you think God did that? I have theories about it. I'm not I'd be excited. genuinely interested to hear your theories. To be honest, he was a very valuable prophet. He, he made right. such an impact that he just couldn't allow him to be humiliated mm. in such a way right. and, and face that kind of torture. Mm. That, that's my personal mm. opinion on the matter. Now, I see. If you were to talk to someone else about it, they might have some, something else mm. to say. Um, do, do you think that, that when... Um, uh, Allah. When I when I say Allah, I don't say that to be disrespectful. It's just it's because um, it's because I want to distinguish between his, God as understood by Muslims and as understood by by Christians. But um, when uh, you, when Allah did this, he presumably knew, according to you, that he was going to, cre as a side effect, create a. I said, well, essentially. I know you said you believe that all Christians are Christians. It happens. <laughs> uh, you um. I know you said you believe that Christians, Jews and Muslims are all going to go to heaven, but Allah presumably knew when he did that, that he was going to create 600 years of false religion until Muhammad came. Because there are no Christians in the, um, uh, in, throughout the first, well, the, all of the early church who believed that Jesus there's, was not crucified. saying, Allah Yeah. yeah. He knows. Yeah. Only him. I, okay. I don't know. You don't know. Nobody sure. knows. Only he knows. And we won't get the answers until it's judgment day, until it's our final falling. I see. Now, okay. I accept that. I accept the fact that I'm not going to have all the evidence to say this is what happened. I'm only basing it on a few points in historical text to say that this is what happened. Because unfortunately, mm. not everything, not every detail is mentioned in the Quran. And I, I have see. to do my own research. Now, a few hadiths here and there maybe seem a bit too out there for me right. to agree to it and that's why there's a lot of tension between me and Sunni. Mm. Now, in order to mitigate that, I say, look, a lot of the hadiths I do believe in, other ones I don't. I haven't done my research into it. Yeah. Now, I'm not saying I completely dismiss it, but just to protect myself, I say that. They accept that. It's the same thing with, with the nine years old and, and the Philippines. Sure. I don't believe that that's what happened okay. because it just it goes against every Islamic teaching. You, you don't mm. do that. It's just Using logic alone, you would know mm. not to do that with a child. No, ideally. <laughs> ideally, there, ideally yes. be no, there would be no paedophilia in the world, regardless of what, whether or not Muhammad was Unfortunately, we live in a world where mm. stuff like that does happen, and unfortunately it does also happen in the Christian context. Of course, context. one of the things that you should know about at least very religious Christians who take our faith seriously, we will, with some exceptions, we will absolutely and vehemently criticize our own churches. Yes, yes. So, so, so I respect I, that completely. So the, uh, yeah. People like this exist. They do. And you can't do anything about yeah. it because we're not in positions of power where we can make a change. Yeah, of course. Now, all we have to do is, is just wait. We have sure. to be patient. And sure. Unfortunately, that's the truth. Because, I'd agree with that. Yeah. But th there is a caveat that I would add to that, and, 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 and it's related to the crucifixion. And, and uh, if, if you um, if, if you need to go, do uh, say, yeah, and we, yeah, we can uh, we can wrap up. But and I'll, I'll let you have yeah, the last sure. word. I just want to very quickly say. What we believe about Jesus dying on the cross, why he died on the cross, is that he absorbed all of that horror, all of that abuse, all of that evil into himself. I'm always on the fence about this thing because yeah. does he also absorb the sins of the people who stuck him up on the... Yes. Really? Yeah, so I, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but in the Gospel of Luke, I believe it is, he, yeah. he, he actually says, as they are nailing his, his, um, his hands to the feet to the wood, he says, 
I, uh, Father, forgive them, they know not what they do. And you're right, in a very, in a human level, it doesn't make sense. But this is the great and beautiful mercy. Yeah, exactly. This is the great and beautiful mercy of our God, that without change, he became human, took onto himself all our humanity except for sin, but took into himself the consequence, the punishment of sin, so that we don't have to take it into ourselves. So if he could do that about the people who stuck him up, then he could do the same thing about other followers of, of God. That's true, he, he could, but God has chosen in his providence... Always trying to look positive. <laughs> yeah, well look, I would love to believe that everyone's going to heaven, but I can't. Because the fact is, people still reject him. But you believe that God is just? Yes. If God, God's justice, in fact, demands... Then there's a conflict of interest here. How, how so? Can he, how can he be able to be just and at the same time not allow someone into heaven if he's a devout person of God, mm -hmm. regardless of what religion? Well, well, that's a good question, but God's justice is answered in the cross. In, it's in the cross that, that Jesus provides the justice. Uh, the satisfaction for our sins. The problem is, is that he, it, Jesus, in Jesus' own teaching and in the teachings of the early church and the modern day church, we, someone only becomes a recipient of that grace, okay. that not justice, because getting justice would mean being punished for our sins, but that mercy if he asks for it. And it has to, he has to ask specifically. There is no other name under heaven, as the Christian says uh, in, in the book of Acts, there is no other name under heaven by which man, uh, man may be saved than the name of Jesus. You have to specifically ask God for mercy in his Son in order to receive that mercy. And it's interesting that the, 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 if, if we're going to end on that note, it's interesting because that was said on the day of Pentecost. Do you know Pentecost? Pentecost is the uh, uh, the later evolution of the, Jew uh, the Jewish feast of Shavuot, which is the Feast of Weeks. I think I've got that right. Okay. Um, one of the early Jewish feasts. For Christians, we celebrate it today, actually. It's Pentecost Sunday today. We celebrate it. I'm going to give a talk about that later. Okay, cool. We celebrate it as the day when the apostles had the Holy Spirit descend upon them, and they preached the gospel to 3,000 people, the good news of salvation in Jesus, and 3,000 people were saved on that day. And that's why we come here, because we want people to go to heaven. Even our jihadist friend over here, I want him to become a Christian and go to... <laughs> I know, Using I know. the word jihad with him, I think, won't, won't solve it. Sure, sure, but you, you take my point. I want him to go to heaven. I want Ali Dawa and Muhammad Hijab and all the Muslims who come here, even the most... I want them to go to heaven, because even though I really don't like them, and I don't, I love them. Loving Christianity means res desiring someone's good. And I desire their salvation, which is the ultimate good. The main basis is, is figuring out whether your religion, your specific religion, mm. denotes that other people cannot go to heaven. Mm. Is that the truth? Because I had to figure that out for myself when mm. I came to, sure. to what the majority of people are saying. Mm. I figured, no, it doesn't make any sense because it contradicts what Allah says. Well, well, well look, look at it this way. What he's all about, I mean. Of course, yeah. Look at it this way. I would rather believe that non-Christians are going to hell, act accordingly, i.e. try and spread the message of salvation, and then die, go to heaven and discover, oh, I was wrong, no harm, no foul, then live as if everyone is going to heaven, oh, not try and spread the message of salvation, then die and discover, oh, loads of people went to hell who might have been saved if I had given so them the message of salvation. But even if you were wrong, you'd say, oh, yeah, of course. If I, well, I mean, I don't, honestly, I, I, this isn't yeah, expressing... the same thing with every... Sure. I mean, I'm, I'm not expressing a doubt. I don't believe that this is, this is untrue. But hypothetically, if I were to get to heaven and discover, oh, oh, the Muslims are here. Uh, the, the, the Sikhs, the Hindus, the Jews are here. Well, I tried. Do you know what I'm, I'm saying? I'm not saying that's why I believe it. I believe it because it's what Christians have always believed about who Jesus is, that he is the only name under heaven by which we could be saved. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and that no one goes to the Father but through him. But at the end of the day, if, we, if we're talking about practical utilitarian arguments, I'd rather be wrong about this than wrong about the opposite. Alex, it's been great. It's been a real pleasure, Honestly. Mohammed. I wish we had more Muslims like you at the corner. There are there are there are some. You know, well, maybe, maybe we should work together to draw them out and have respectful maybe, discussions. Maybe. Yeah, cool. Anyway, wait, wait. God bless you, my friend. Take care. JC, where are you? <laughs> so those of you who saw the. Um, kerfuffle of last week will have seen me getting fairly irate, with good reason, uh, because the Muslims were defending paedophilia. Now you've seen the other side of the kind of discussions that we have at Speaker's Corner with good, respectful, kind, I would even say liberal Muslims, but that's a different discussion. We want more of that to happen, because it's in conversations like that that people find salvation in Christ Jesus. And Christians, brothers and sisters in Christ, on this day of Pentecost, I want to invite you to Speaker's Corner. I want you to come here, and you don't have to get involved in the fights, you don't have to get involved in the shouting matches, you don't even have to get involved in the debates. Come here and seek honest, good, respectful people who are willing to have conversations like that. Because I can guarantee you, if you do that, 
people will be saved. The Lord is here, his spirit is with us. Thanks be to God. Blessed Pentecost.